Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Bob Chitrathorn, who's the co-founder of Simplified Wealth Management, and we'll be talking about social security claiming options. Bob, welcome to the program. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me here. You are welcome. Uh, before we dive into this really brief topic, that'll probably take about two minutes to cover. You know, ha ha. This is a this is really really telling for people to really understand. So I'm excited to learn about this. But before we jump into it, give us a little bit of your story and your background, and how did you get into financial services? Yeah, I mean, I guess my story is, um, you know, I didn't grow up with money. Um, heard parents arguing about money. Didn't want that to happen in the future. As I grew and learned, uh, took bits and pieces of pros that I learned from my mom and my dad and, you know, just applied it to everyday life and studied hard, worked hard and um, always had a niche for, you know, money and being an entrepreneur and, um, you know, math slash finances. So it just kind of had a natural progression. I uh, went to school, got my BS in finance, uh, my BS in real estate. Um, then I also got my uh, certificate of financial planning from Pepperdine as well and been a financial advisor for about just a little over 19 years now. Uh, loving what I do. I love educating. I love helping people. I, I love giving free information away, essentially speaking, whether they work with me yeah. or not. I just love helping. You know, and, and what goes around comes around the law of abundance, giving and serving, giving value, all of that ties in. So I think that is so uh, powerful. Um, and like I was kind of joking at the beginning, so security is a important topic and it really can be misunderstood. So when you are beginning to educate your clients about social security um, claiming options, where do you start? What What is the first place that you're looking at to help them understand some of their options? So when we're talking about social security, you know, when I'm talking to a client, it's client specific, right? Based tailored directly to their age. But generally speaking, um, when we're talking about as a whole for social security, you know, the main thing is how do you maximize your social security, right? That's what people want to know. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, maximum. Yeah, give me the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one of the, one of the things with that is, you know, you need to work and contribute for at least 35 years. That's how you're going to get the most out of your social security. So if you look back and you had 35 years of earnings, but on the social security statement, one year of you know work was a hundred bucks, it might very well be great and in your benefit to go work for another year or half a year and make seven thousand dollars, greatly improving your social security benefit. Um, you can also maximize your social security benefit by delaying taking your benefits, right? A lot of people can start start taking benefits at early as 62. Um, but once you take it at 62, you know, it's you're pretty much stuck. But if you wait till age 70, you might be able to get uh, a much higher amount of social security. Usually the number is 8% per year. From 62 to 70, your monthly benefits going to increase um, by waiting. Most people usually take it between 66 and 67, depending on date of birth, but you can delay it all the way to age 70. Um, another way to maximize social security is, you know, you want to coordinate uh, benefits with your spouses, right? Um, you can usually claim a spousal benefit, which is up to 50% of your spouse's full retirement benefit. Again, these are just general ideas um, to speak with a specialist when you're about to claim Social Security. Um, but there's lots of different ways of doing things. You know, Depending on when you're born, you can consider uh, a file to spend, which is not going to be as feasible moving forward based on uh, the phase out because it's going to be phased out for those born after January 1st, 1954. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, another great way I tell people to maximize social security is guess what? Work, continue working after you claim yeah. social security, right? That's going to help you bring more up to the, up, yeah, up to some of the limits, right? Cause yeah, yeah. Cause after a certain limit, limit. You, yeah. If you go over yeah. the limit, then you're pretty, you're going to get a huge deduction, uh, from social security. So, you know, work part-time, work up to the limit when it changes every single year or every couple of years. So always check mm -hmm. on that. Um, that's probably the most, um, you know, that eight percent that eight uh, percent uh, thing that you mentioned. I want to kind of dive in a little bit deeper on that. So, if you wait from whatever age up to whatever age, and doesn't really matter the numbers because people need to talk to a 
qualified professional like yourself, but you know, would this make sense to me? But that 8% does not sound like it's something to jump up and down about until you realize that's 8% every year compounded, right? And per month. When you're, yeah. You're, so you're getting so it's eight per year annually compounded. So yeah. from 62 to 63, if you wait until 63, instead of 62, every month, your monthly pay from social security is going to be 8% more than it would have been at 62. But guess what? Yeah. 8% may not sound big, but that's every single year you're on social security. So that payment yeah. is 8% higher at 63 for the rest of your life than it would have been at 62. Yeah. Right. You at know, that's, that's big. Higher. And, and if you can put it off, like, like, you know, I'm sure somebody has done a research study on this, but a large percentage of people I would feel confident are looking at retirement, but they don't want to just sit around and shop and travel and play golf. They want to just pull way back and work two days a week. Like you said, you know, one way to maximize is still work up to certain limits. So if you could air quotes, retire and and work a little bit just to stay active, uh, but not trigger you know some of those extra taxes or whatnot. Um, that could really change your lifestyle down, and then you're taking advantage of delaying it just a few more years until you can get that compounding really worked for. So I think that's a a great point that people just need to number one know what they do want. What does retirement look like? And if it is sitting back and playing golf and whatever, more power to you. But you know that's the kind of thing that you need to take into consideration. Exactly. And also it's it's efficient and exponentially powerful because, you know, let's say you retire at 65, you're still working, but you saved enough as you worked in your 401k or IRAs or whatnot. So now you delay claiming social security, right? So you're, you're, you're retired working two days a week, but now you're utilizing your income from working two days a week and then also taking money from your other resources to live. And every year your social security is going up by 8% annually. So now yeah. when you hit age 70, guess what? You don't have to take as much out of your retirement because you have right. such a higher pot of social security paying you monthly. And again, it's different yep. for everybody, uh, depending on you know life expectancy and whatnot. But I would consider that kind of being you know the golden mecca is, hey, I'm retired. I'm 65. I'm working. I'm not touching my social security because I have enough in retirement. I hit 70. I claim social security. Now I'm not taking as much from retirement. So that continues to right. grow and become a legacy for your family. I, I think, you know, and like we've said, I, we're very careful to say this is not the formula for every single person, right? You have to see what's best for you. But that that scenario could be very, very powerful. But then on the flip side, just like for every, you know, up there's a down or a seesaw, when you push it down on one side, it goes up on the other. Well, for some people, it's like, hey, listen, I cannot afford um, financially or physically to put it off. So you may have some some situations where it's like I have to claim the first second that I can claim. So you can claim early, right? So talk a little bit about claiming early. What are some of those considerations? Yeah, so I mean, you know, the pros and cons to everything, but uh you definitely can claim early, you know, if you need access again, you know, claim at age 62 uh so that you can get a source of income that you can rely on and know that it's going to be there for you. You know, one of the things people are talking about right now, hey, social security good to get up, go on pause because government might shut down. Well, no, because social security in a generic term is funded by um, slash a pension slash kind of a trust fund, if you will. Um, so, you know, if you retire at age 62, you have this predictable source of income. Uh, so that is a pro, right? That's good for you. Uh, claiming early gives you flexibility, right? Because if you are able to claim early, uh, it will allow you to draw, um, delay drawing down other assets, right? So if you get income at 62 from Social Security, well, now you don't have to touch that amount from your 401k or retirement accounts, right? Again, we always say it's different for everybody. There's different pros and different cons, but that's generally um, a benefit as well to claiming early, you know, not having to touch those yep. other retirement assets, depending mm -hmm. on what you have them in and how they're doing. Um, there's a potential, you know, you know, if you live, a certain amount of time claiming early could be more beneficial for you, right? Because you got extra years. Um, yeah. So it just kind of depends on everybody's specific situation uh, in regards to that. And so those are the pros of claiming early. Uh, you know, we kind of spoke spoke to the cons already, but that's that would be mm -hmm. pros of claiming early. Um, one major con of claiming early is, you know, you're missing out on the 8% per year. Yep. And, you know, if a husband and wife are 
approaching retirement and making their decisions together, um, there even could be some uh, strategy or considerations to have the wife claim now and the w- husband claim later or vice versa. So I think some of those things are, are um, like you mentioned, the the spouses and and, and what about, yeah, yeah spousal. So talk about spousal benefits. And then also w- I've heard this before, so you can clarify, but here's a husband and wife that got divorced a handful of years ago. Kid, what of the spouses still claim on the divorced spouse? Is there some spousal benefit that way? Yeah, so there's there's essentially two two main general functions. And again, most people think Social Security is pretty basic and easy. Uh, there's so many different variables and ways you yep. can claim and do things. So I always say talk to a specialist, uh, financial advisor, Social Security specialist. Um, you know, when you call the Social Security Administration, a lot of times they're very well trained. It's just they don't know the overall big picture, right? So you want someone who sees a big picture in all your finances. But when it comes to spousal benefits, um, you know, they're available to the current spouse, husband or wife uh, of an eligible worker who's already receiving Social Security retirement or disability benefits. To qualify for the spousal benefit, you know, the individual has to be 62 years old, have been married to the worker, right, the spouse for at least one year. That worker spouse must have already filed for their own Social Security benefits. Now the spouse benefit can be up to 50% of the person who is work, you know, the worker person who claimed that, mm-hmm. you know, the married spouse can get 50% of the worker's full retirement benefit um, if they claim before their full retirement age. And therefore they can wait until they're 70 and then jump onto their own social security. And, you know, potentially that could be, hey, they're taking, let's just use husband and wife, they're taking their husband's social security. And then when they turn 70, they trigger on their own claiming social security because their 70 amount is bigger than half of their husband's social security, right? So there's lots of ways to play into that. And then for divorced spouses, you know, that could also happen in certain conditions. Um, To qualify for a divorced spousal benefit, uh, again, you have to be 62. At current, you have to be married to the eligible worker for at least 10 years, right? And then be unmarried uh, when you're claiming that divorced spouse uh, benefit. So the bottom line is, it is like we've said a couple times here, not cut and dry, not cookie cutter. But with that scenario you just mentioned, there could be some unknown opportunities that you wouldn't have thought of initially. So make sure that if you're looking at you know, making these decisions on your own, get with someone that is a social security specialist. And and I think here's a, a word that I've heard thrown around before. So speak to this. Um, for the most part, it making your decision is irrevocable. You can't change it, right? Because I think a lot of people might go, oh, I'm going to do this. And then a couple of years, I'll change. No, once you've claimed, that's it. Well, let me touch on two things here. Going back to uh, spousal benefits. Yeah, there's so many things people don't, don't think about that literally can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So yes, always talk to an expert. But now when we're talking about irrevocable uh, means, hey, you know, once you file, you can't change, you can't do anything. Eh, that's typically true for the most part. Uh, but you can change your social security uh, claiming strategy after you initially claim. But there's limitations and considerations that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Uh-huh. So one is if you claim social security benefits within the last 12 months, you may be able and eligible to withdraw your application. Now, you may have to pay back the benefits you've received, right? Okay. And any, including any spousal or dependent benefits that may have been received as well while you were, you know, on claim, if you will. But you can withdraw that within that first 12 months. And then after you withdraw, you can reapply for benefits at a later date, right? Um, essentially, if you claimed it at 63, three months later, you said, hey, I don't want to. You know, I got a windfall of money. I don't need to claim my Social Security. You withdraw your application, you pay back the money you took for the last three months, plus any uh, benefits that your dependents or uh, spouses or ex-spouses had claimed on you. And now you can uh, delay until age 70 if you wanted to. Um, So that's one option. Uh, Another option is uh, if you claim before your full retirement age, which is typically 67, and you're still within your 12 months, again, you can withdraw and reapply. Uh, But those are pretty much the only way to change benefits um you know it's mainly drawn the application within that first 12 months um and that's about it yeah so there's one more caveat unless unless you appeal it which means 
hey, got I've it. got my social security for a while now. And I realize, hey, I think there's a big error and you appeal it to the social security administration and, you know, they err in your favor. Yeah. So there's there's some ways, but you better make sure that if at all possible, you are doing what you pre- uh, prefer up front. Um, and, and it kind of gets get, makes me think about this. Every time something goes wrong or you don't know how to do something in life, you go to Google and you just Google, oh, how do I fix this or do this? Getting this kind of advice from Google or even the even the Social Security Administration website is really generic. So talk a little bit about why how people can get some basic information, but make sure that it's quantified and clarified um, from a qualified professional. Yeah. So let's just say you are going to Google online, you know, your social security information. That's just what you're going to do. You're steadfast on it. You don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to talk to a financial advisor. Um, plain and simple, that's what you're going to do. Well, first and foremost, be aware. Know that it's different for everybody. What I mean by that, if I Google, I want to get buff, it's going to be different for me, a person who's 5'10", 150 pounds, versus someone who is 6'10", and 220 pounds, right? There's going to be different things that can help each of us differently get to our quote, end quote, buff status quicker and more efficiently. So keep that in mind, right? But if you're going to Google, you know, one of the things to do is you want to go to the official uh, Social Security Administration website, which is ssa.gov. There's lots of information you can get about Social Security benefits, retirement planning, uh, disability benefits, Medicare, and so much more. Um, Again, if you're not working with a specialist, you may not understand it all, but you can go there for a good amount of information. Um, By going there, you can also... Uh, create your own social security account. I, I believe it's called my social security and you have your own account. You can pull your statements. Uh, it can calculate um, using calculators on their website. Hey, you know, if I work for 10 more years and this is my projected income for the next 10 years and I stop working and I claim social security at 62, how much do I get? If I claim at 65, how much do I get? If I claim at 67, 70, how much do I get? Um, so it has really great information that you can get uh, from the website. Uh, the website has plenty of educational resources as well and publications um, on ssa.gov. I would definitely avoid unofficial websites. Anyone can put anything on the internet. If I wanted to say I was Superman in the movie five years ago, I could put that on the internet. Um, (laughs) Right. (laughs) But was it actually the case? Probably not. (laughs) 100% not, (laughs) right? Yep. (laughs) Um, Yep. You know, and, and again, you know, there's lots of online calculators, but when it comes to social security, Again, their ssa.gov website has so much information. Uh, and it's I, good I, information, but but aren't I correct in thinking that it's going to be kind of like the cut and dry basic information, but you're not going to get into some maybe some strategies that could, you know, because for instance, you sit down with a social security specialist like yourself and you might be asking a lot of questions to discover opportunities and go, oh, now here's the thing. You could claim here, but you said this, and what we really should consider is, and you're not going to get that from a website, even if it is social security, because they're they're just going to give rote information. So I think maybe uh, talk a little bit about the benefit of working with a uh, specialist like yourself versus just someone that's a financial professional that can then dabbles and knows a little bit about social security. Well, exactly. Yeah. Working with a specialist is far, far, far beyond going to give you uh, more value, right? Um, the analogy I would use here is, you know, you can get this information um, on the website, but knowing how to use it and what to do with it and put all the pieces together, that's where a specialist is going to come into play. They're going to think of different things from different questions that they ask you, such as, hey, on the website, oh, yeah, guess what? Yeah, you, you know what? You can get a benefit um, from your spouse. You know, they may know about spousal benefit. Um of such nature, but let's say you're divorced. They may not know there's access to divorce spousal benefit. And you may they may tell you to claim your own benefit as opposed to saying, hey, you know, let's take two ideas, use a divorce spouse benefit, wait till your benefit hits this amount and then claim your own. You know, there's different yes. tactics and strategies that you're not going to be able to put together unless you know how to kind of like read in between the lines, right? That's a big point. Yeah, so that's that's something where I think that it takes someone sitting down and going, okay, 
Let's see how this would apply to you just for consideration. You know, I think that is that's the big thing to to keep in mind is it's not the same uh, prescription uh, if you want to think of it that way for every single person. So sitting down with the specialist, they can ask questions, make sure that you're understanding and just give you those scenarios. Like if you uh, claimed here, then here's what this would be. If you waited, here's what this would be. So I think this has been so helpful, Bob, just to realize that there's a lot more that goes into it than quote unquote, check in the box. So thank you for this uh, time. If someone is interested in learning more about social security claiming options and reaching out and connecting with you, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, the best way to connect with me, uh, you can go to my website, www.planwithbob.com. Uh, you can email me at, at bob at simplifiedwealth.com. Those are the two easiest ways, or you can just Google Bob Chitrathorn, um, C-H-I-T-R-A-T-H-O-R-N, and you'll find me somewhere online. Um, it'll probably say I was not Superman five years ago. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.